for joining us in the newsroom. Uh, we have in our, in our studio today two very special guests, Dr. Daniel Goh and Mr. Leon Pereira from the WP. Welcome to The Straits Times. Thank so you, you just had a tour of our newsroom and uh, first off, maybe you can tell us your impressions, you know, what struck you most about the newsroom? Well, what struck me most was the, um, the industrial setting. Mm -hmm. It was very, very spacious, very expensive, and, but at the same time, um, the lighting. It was really very bright. Mm -hmm. And yourself, uh, Leon? Uh, a lot of uh, technological innovation. So uh, I was quite intrigued by the virtual reality, the augmented reality. It's good that you're experimenting with that. And these are going to be more important in the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was the first form of media you looked at this morning? You know, your Facebook mm. feed or TV or <laughs> hard copy of The Straits Times? For me, it's hard copy. No? Okay. Uh, because I do, uh, I'm still a bit of a hard copy person, so mm -hmm. that's the first thing I'll look at and then social media feed later. Mine will be on the mobile, on my Facebook feed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as my wife would say, I'm not sure whether this is fit for camera or my throne. <laughs> <laughs> so, could you share with us what your daily media diet is like and has this changed since you joined uh, politics? Mm. It has changed for me. I mean, the only hard copy thing that I, I read these days is The Economist. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's it's all digital, and uh, um, there'll be some selected, uh, selective, uh, specially selected apps. For example, like the Guardian that I read, mm -hmm. uh, and the Straits Times, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, but the rest is mostly through Facebook feed. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, wouldn't seem to change too much. I think the key point is to draw news and information from from diverse sources, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, different sources, different outlets within Singapore as well as foreign and local. So mm -hmm. I'll read print Straits Times, I will read um, uh, mainstream media online as well as uh, alternative media online and mm -hmm. overseas media. Uh, at home my wife likes to keep the BBC radio on and mm -hmm. so our whole family is listening to that as we're getting breakfast and, and mm -hmm. so on. So that's also nice for some things. So as politicians, what would you say are must-reads for yourself to take a pulse of the people, you know, to get to know like insights into Singapore society and all that? I would say it's, uh, the importance is really diversity of sources. So I think mm -hmm. Singapore is becoming increasingly complex. There are different uh, demographic groups which have different media and information consumption habits. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think print media still has a role to play. The older generation actually uh, engage uh, a lot with print media, uh, broadcast media as well, uh, magazines, alternative media. I mean, it's the, the importance of uh, diverse sources I think is key. Mm -hmm. So Daniel, besides uh, being a newsmaker, you know, you are, uh, besides <laughs> being a consumer of the media rather, yeah. you're also a newsmaker. So how do you use the media to get your messages across to the voters? Um, well, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm a newsmaker per se, but I mean, I'm actually quite surprised that, that sometimes when I make certain comments on my Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, which is the public figure page, not my private uh, page, um, it actually gets reported as such. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Daniel made a statement on his Facebook page. So that actually has actually scared me a bit, mm -hmm. uh, realizing that I'm kind of like a newsmaker, so I've been more withdrawn and more circumspect, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do you get your, uh, I mean, how do you use the media to get your messages across to people? I, I think as uh, as um, I mean as members of the party, we mm. I think we are we are we're thinking more in terms of the party's messages mm. rather than our personal messages, um, and especially because both of us we are we are chairs of the media team, uh, so we are always thinking in terms of uh, how do we bring the message the party's message across mm -hmm. through the media, uh, so we we are, we don't really think of our personal messages per se. I think we are always thinking of how do we do that, and Facebook is one of the primary channels now. So talking about bringing the party's message across, uh, both of you are chair and deputy chair of the media mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. and uh, the Workers' Party as an opposition party has seems to have clearer lines of, uh, on the rules of engagement with the media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you ensure that you know, a potential candidate or member can hold their line and the party's line? Like, is there any training provided to them? Or? Mm -hmm. I think uh, obviously for any functional party, a certain amount of training and a certain amount of discipline mm -hmm. is necessary when you are appearing and speaking as a representative of the party. Mm -hmm. So that and we have our internal processes to ensure that mm -hmm. uh, within the party and uh, we, I think beyond the processes also it's a culture yeah. and expectation they want to internalize among all of the party spokespersons that they are representatives of the party, there's a greater goal here mm -hmm. 
and you know we have to exercise that that discipline when we communicate publicly. Yeah, mm -hmm. We have to set a good example ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Lau Tia Kiang, your former party chief, who <laughs> doesn't have a Facebook page, and I noticed that your current party chief, uh, Mr. Pritam Singh, he's quite active on social media. So, yes. how has the changing media landscape uh, affected WP's media strategy? Um, has it changed? I mean, we have always we have tried so many times, and mm. for, for I mean, for so long to convince uh, Mr. Lau to go on Facebook, um, but we have kind of given up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't think anything has changed per se. It's, it's just that the, the fact that Mr. Lau is more old school, he doesn't want to go on Facebook because he, he thinks that you know it's, it's it's a young people's game, mm -hmm. um, and and he, he he listens to us. He's very open. He's very mm -hmm. he's still he's very progressive actually in, in his thinking. Mm -hmm. It's just that he doesn't want to get personally involved. Mm -hmm. And I think there's there's also also another reason why he doesn't get involved is because he doesn't want to turn Workers Party into. Lotia Kiang Party, mm. yeah, because he doesn't want you know the the kind of celebrity kind of uh, cult worship you know that, that accrues to certain um, you know um, to do the kind of political feel in Singapore. So he 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 withdraws quite quite uh, deliberately, I think. Mm. From that, yeah. So yeah. Um, how do you hope to shape the party's relationship with the media, being head of the media team? To hold straight stamps at arm's length. <laughs> 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 I suppose you know it's an evolutionary thing. Yeah. Right? As the population and society evolve, you know the media consumption will also evolve, mm -hmm. and so we need to evolve with that. So we need to engage with new forms of uh, information dissemination, new types of media. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to really keep our finger on the pulse in that sense, and and, and reach out in new and creative and interesting ways. Like attention spans are not getting longer; they're probably getting shorter. Mm -hmm. So we always have to experiment and find creative ways to engage. Mm -hmm. So audiences. one last question: If you were given the chance to edit your own newspaper or TV news program today, what would be the three top three items uh, you would put on the front page? Uh, today it was especially hot because I came in public transportation. Yes. So um, yeah, I took a bus and, and just crossing over the overhead bridge was I was just <laughs> sweating profusely. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll put climate emergency. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'll just put the, the, the heat there. Mm -hmm. And Leon? I, I would say uh, there should be a lot of emphasis on uh, what individuals and groups are doing, you know, mm -hmm. not only the newsmakers, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and the government or political parties, but also ordinary people, citizens groups, civil society groups. There should be also a good attention paid to that now, because I think the weight of uh, those initiatives is, is growing. So that, that would be one thing for sure. Okay. Thanks, uh, Daniel and Leon.